Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the new C Sharp 8 features that have come to Unity as of Unity 2021 LTS. There's quite a few cool new features that C Sharp 8 brings uh, to the to the sort of coding table, as it were. Um, and I thought I'd just do a bit of a, a dive in here. But before we jump into those new features, I just want to let you know about this video's sponsor. If you've got big dreams of being a solo indie dev or even a jack of all trades indie on a small team, you're going to need more than coding skills. So once you've set up your cool player controller, you're going to need to have a environment for them to run around in. And that's where Game Dev TV and Grant Abbott's new environment art course comes in. The course uses Blender 3.1 and teaches you basically everything that you need to know to go from zero to making beautiful, unique environments for your games. The entire course is project based, so you'll get to work straight away on developing new skills. And if you use the link in the description, you'll get a very generous 90% off the price. Oh, back to the video. So one of the first things that I'm going to cover is interfaces. So over on our interfaces, you can see we've got a property, which is interface uh, name, and we also have a method called print name and in print name we've actually um, find what that method uh, can do and you'll see that back on our um, script here interface uh, example this turned from interface example to all of the examples so uh, just ignore the name of that class so that implements um, our interface which I've just called uh, I interface and you can see that if we get rid of this um, interface name here, see that it starts to complain. And that's because we haven't implemented the things that our interface wants. And in this case, it just wants to implement that missing uh, member, which is put down here. Now I'm actually going to just undo that and I'll paste back in what we had. So I'm getting, um, we've got our interface name and it's got a getter, which is defined here on our interface. And I'm just returning uh, interface muck interfacey. Now we don't actually need uh, this get, that's what this squiggle's telling me. We could just do um, that. So our interface says that we should have a string called interface name, and I'm defining that in code as interface muck interfacey. If I wanted to change it sort of in the inspector, I could have a public string um, like uh, inter base name inspector or whatever and then we could change that in the inspector and then just return that here and you'll notice if you've watched my interact with anything tutorial uh, we kind of do that there we put a prompt in here so when you walk up to an item it'll say like open close inspect or whatever you can define that here and that all uses an interactable interface that itself isn't new isn't the thing that i wanted to talk about we're kind of getting a bit sidetracked here um, what is new is the ability to have um, methods that are defined within our interface. So you can see here on our interface test, I've got this method called interface test. And what we do is we cast our class. So this class interface example, we need to cast that to the type of I interface. And then from that, we can um, update text, which is just going to update some text in this box here. And then we can call the print name method which again is defined here. If I wanted to add another method to our interface, um, and we said like public void, uh, public in get um, number or whatever, you see that we've added that here, but then we, we get this complaint. Uh, and then any of our classes that implement I interface, we're gonna have to go back through and then we're gonna have to implement um, the missing members, which we might not necessarily want to do because not everything that in that implements this interface may necessarily need every single method that we define on our interface. So the great thing about being able to define the body of the method in the interface is that we can, it's, almost, it's backwards compatible. So we can add in this uh, new public void calculate random number. We've defined the um, body of the method here. And you can see that even though we've added another method to our interface, we're not getting any complaints here. And then if we wanted to, we could then uh, use our interface class and then call uh, calculate random number. We only need to do that if we are actually going to use that um, method. And you can see that kind of work in here with our print names. So if I hit play on our project here, we've got this button interface test. I'm just going to click it and it's returning, um, it's printing the name to our console here. And this update text method is just uh, a method to update the text kind of self-explanatory. It's got nothing to do with the C-sharp 8 features. So that's interfaces. Um, let's move on to the next one. So we've got a null test. So I've got a class here called my class, and it's got some stuff in it, which we'll, we'll use later on. 
So I've got a method here called null test, which is what we call when we click the null test button. And here, we are generating a random number between zero and 100, um, not 101 because random.range uh, is exclusive of the final number. So if we had 100, it'd actually pick a number between zero and 99. Um, so I've just gone one, one above to 101. And then we're saying, is our random number greater than 50? If it is, let's, uh, let's create a new instance of my class and then therefore new class wouldn't be null. And if it's less than 50, let's just assign it as null. And then we've got this kind of new uh, syntax here. So we can just type if new class is null or new class is not null. Now, obviously, to do this previously, you'd have to say if new class, it, uh, new class is not equal to null, which, you know, it's not the end of the world. That's how we've been doing it. But this just reads so much nicer. So if new class is null or if new class is not null, you can just type that out now. Um, and we can see that if we, um, so if we go back over to our little project here, it, we're printing the random number and then we're going to say whether the class is null or not. And that's that if statement working kind of as we expect here. So we can just keep on pressing that Try and get one over 50. So 76 new class is not null over 60, six new class is null. So that's just that new bit of syntax that we can use there. So that's our null testing. Let's move on to the switch test. So I've defined an enum here, uh, which is just a bunch of item types you might have in some sort of like fantasy game. And then I've got this public item types, uh, current item type, and that's just so I can get it in the inspector here and we can swap which item type it is. Now, the old way of doing switch statements is like this. So you've got switch and then you switch on the current item type and then case item types dot weapon chosen type equals weapon and then break. And this is, uh, you know, quite a lot of code. Um, we've got 62 to 84. So 22 lines of code, um, for this switch statement. And then at the end, we're just going to debug dot log, uh, chosen item type is, and then the chosen item type, but with the new, uh, syntax, we can do this. And you can see that this is so much cleaner. It's easier to read and it's only nine lines of code as opposed to 22. So now we can define a new string called chosen item type. And then depending on the current item type, we can set what that string is. So we can just type current item type switch. So we're not doing switch and then the brackets with current item type. We're saying current item type switch. And then we open up our curly braces and then we can just put um, item types dot weapon, weapon, item types dot armor is armor. So we can say item types dot weapon with the lambda operator and then weapon um, armor is armor potions potions etc. And now instead of having a default case, you just do an underscore the lambda expression and then you can type in like you know whatever the default thing is. Here we're just throwing a new argument exception, saying that it's an invalid enum. Obviously we're controlling that through the inspector here, so we'll never get there. But it's just good to have that default case to just catch if something goes wrong. And then I'm just making a call to update our text here. So we've got our switch test. So that's using this method here. And you can see that we can press switch test and chosen item type is weapon. Let's swap that to consumables. Chosen item type is consumables, crafting, etc. You can see that kind of work in there. So this is a new way of doing switch statements. And it's just a lot sort of cleaner than this kind of mess. So the next thing to cover is uh, property patterns which I've not actually set up that button. So um, let's just do that. So interface example, uh, property pattern test. So we've got our property pattern test here. What it's doing is it's um, generating a random number and then whether that number is less than 50, it's deciding is our choice gonna be one or two. And then we are implementing um, my class and we're using the constructor to pass in our choice. So this is just going into my imp property here, which is this property. So what we can do here with our property patterns, I've also spelled that wrong. Um, so I'm updating the text and I'm updating it based on this method here. So what we're doing here is we're using the new switch functionality again. So we're returning and we're gonna return based on my class and then switch and instead of like in our switch we're using uh, an enum to sort of switch here what you can actually do now is you can check a class for a property and then switch based on that property 
So we've got my int property um, if the case is one. So if my int property is equal to one, then we can say, uh, okay, so I fixed that. That was because I was trying to set it up in one way, uh, but it, I had to do it in this way. So um, yeah, so it's all the same. It's just this text here. So we're saying that if uh, my int property is one, then we're less than 50. And that's because we've decided up here that one is less than 50. Um, and my int property two. Um, so we click on our property pattern test. So we say 82 and that's 50 or higher. So my class has been created with uh, a property of two and that's um, being reflected here. So nine is less than 50, 95 is 50 or higher. Um, so yeah, that's just a good way of now switching based on a property and it uses the new switch syntax, so it just looks nice and clean. And again, you do that with the curly braces, you put the property, with a colon and then the value that you want to switch based on. And then we've got our default again, which is just throwing a, a new uh, argument exception. Okay, so here's a new um, bit of functionality as well. And this is the last one I'm going to cover. And it's nullable reference types. So we've got a method here, nullable reference test. And again, I'm, I've just got my class and it's uh, called C. And I'm just creating a new um, instance of that class. And you can see here that if I say c.myfloat property is equal to null, um, then I want to update the text and say my float is null. Now the problem with that is, and you can see here that it says expression is always false. That's because floats by their design can't be null. They're always uh, instantiated with something. If you create a new null and then return it, I believe it'll print out zero. Just like for example, a Boolean will be false by default. Um, floats will be zero, ints will be zero, etc. That's kind of what they're initialized with. Um, but with the new, um, but with new nullable reference types, so we can go down to our um, class here. I've got my my float property, um, and you can see that if I want to set it to null, we'll get a bit of an error here. Uh, cannot convert cannot convert source type null to target type uh, float. And now normally what you'd probably do is initialize it with a minus one and then you would check for minus one and then that would be new checking against it being null. If we actually want to define it as null and then we can check against that, what we can do now is after, is after the type that you're um, wanting to make nullable, you just put a question mark. So we've got public float question mark my float property and now I can assign it as null. And then I've also got my class here, which takes in a float and then and then assigns that float to my float property. So now you can see that our error is gone. So it may be null, it may not be null. So if my float property is equal to null, then we're going to update the text with my float is null or else we'll update the text with our float, uh, with our float property value. So as well as having this check for um, my property equaling null, um, we can also check for some other stuff. So we can say uh, c.myfloatProperty uh, has value. And if it does have a value, then let's um, instead, we can update our text with the float property dot value. And then in here, we can say my float is null. And you can see that we're accessing uh, my float property dot value. Um, we don't actually need to put the dot value, but it's good to kind of, you know, it, it kind of makes sense that if you're checking for a value, then you can put the value here so you know exactly what it is you're checking against. And you can do this with bools as well. So like I said, bools by default are set to null, um, uh, are set to false. So we can have public bool my bool property. And we can make it nullable. And then in here, we can say uh, my bool property is equal to null. And we can do the same thing here. So we can say if c dot my float property dot has value, we can update the text and we can check uh, if c dot my bool property is equal to null. And let's update the text with my float. Uh, my bool is, and then the value of my bool property. So now let's put a random dot range in here of zero uh, f to a hundred f. And now if we're using random range on floats, it is inclusive of the last value. So 
is going to go between 0 and 100. So that's going to be our float. And then for the bool, we can say um, random dot range between 0 and 51 is the result of this greater than 25. So if it's greater than 25, obviously that's going to be true. If it's less than 25, that'll be false. So you can see that if we hit play over here now, we've got our nullable reference test, and we've got my float um, is, and then the value that has been chosen. And then we're actually just checking for null here. Um, so let's get rid of this. And let's use the new syntax so it is not null. So if my bool property is not null, and then let's implement Let's update the text to show the value of that property. So there you have it. That's just a few kind of new uh, C Sharp 8 features that we can now access as part of uh, Unity 2021 LTS. I think my favorite features have got to be the new switch um, syntax. Like this is just so much cleaner to read. And I really like just being able to put uh, new class is null, is not null. Um, I like when you can do it in the most human readable way, it just flows a lot better. So. Like if new class is null, do this. It's just, you know, it, it just reads a lot better, I think. Let me know if these features are exciting to you. Let me know in the comments below. I know it's not a big tutorial, but I'll put the project files for this over on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash danpos. I'd like to take a minute to thank my Patreons. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have Sector Sweep. You can see all of the other 4,000 XP tier members on screen now. Thanks a lot for your support. But feel free to join the Discord server, which is linked in the description below to discuss this video or any of my other videos. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.